Uh, hello, I am Cedricus, the Baz Lerman of the RPG community. Uh, this is Drawing the Owl 6.5. I am currently trying to finish up a ton of uni stuff, so this is a stack of things that I've been going through tonight. But I'm uh, I'm kind of uh, cooked on that for a bit, so instead we're going to um, do some move design. I, I basically was um, plugging into it on my own, and I thought you all might want to get a piece of it. Um, this time, what we're doing is we're cutting things down. So uh, a lot of the moves that we did over the last bit um, were about emulating very specific actions that we wanted to see. Um, and now we're going to try and cut those down into like eight basic moves. I was playing Alas for the Awful Sea. Alas for the Awful Sea is amazing. And it does a lot with the very, very, very few moves. The moves aren't particularly... Um, uh, like the moves aren't particularly broad. They're not. They're. We should. We should bring up a lass. Let me bring up a lass. We can talk about it. I love talking about Haley and B's work. Anyway. Uh, basic move sheet. Okay, and you'll want a thing there. Um. Great. So. Um. Basic moves for Alas are the things that we see in uh, a lot of uh, its era of PBTA games. So act under pressure, intimidate. Um, so uh, I think we called this, I, I just call this the act under fire move. Um, this is uh, demand what you want, which is the kind of guy I grow. Um, this is the ask for what you want move. This is the um, make dead with bullets move. Um, help and hinder, so the aid move, sense what's beyond, which is your uh, very, very broad fiction interrogation move, um, read another's thoughts, uh, which is read a person and read a sitch. Um, God, alas, does so much with these moves. Um, it's not it's not all it has. The, um, the descriptor moves uh, add a lot to it as well, but man, Man, Alas does a lot with these moves. Um, and so that's what that's taught me. Oh, yes. Hey, Pops. Um, congratulations on the work in Codex Moonlight today, by the way. I uh, gave it a read today. It looks amazing. Um, and hello to another D20. I'm not sure who you are, if I know you well, but um, a pleasure. So uh, let's talk about... Um, so the, this, this is like the eight moves. Now, the issue is the moves list that I have, oops, the moves list that I have, which is here, um, is about 14 moves at the moment, um, which is shorter than Apocalypse World. Apocalypse World is looking at uh, about 16 odd moves just in like basics and specials. Um, Hey, Maria, I haven't had a chance to watch The Last Sig yet. Um, I need to. It's on my list. But as I was saying, I think before you got here, 30-odd papers, lit reviews on um, on uh, abdominal ultrasounds in trauma. So that's why I'm up at 2.30 in the morning doing my game design. <laughs> um, pleasure. Pleasure to see you there. So um, we have like... We have like 13 basic moves. And the issue with that is that, um, so I, I just started with my fiction interrogation moves. Um, so even Alas has three types of fiction interrogation moves, right? You've got um, your reader person, your reader situation, and you've got your beyond move, your like sense weird shit move. Now, um, I think we spoke about in really, really early episodes why it was important to have all three of those. But basically, it's about the, the well, why, why some games want to have all three of those. Because remember, uh, Dungeon World doesn't have read another's thoughts or read a person um, because that's not the kind of interactions it's trying to generate. Um, uh, Monster Hearts doesn't have uh, either of the first two. It's just got the weird move, um, which is great. So... Um, Let's go back to these and talk about the big differences between these ones is um, the the answers. Um, in uh, 
in this this read and others thoughts move you're really looking for like a specific directed answer in read a sitch move it's usually about um i don't know what i want but i know something's going on here and sense what's beyond does that as well now my question is uh and this this will show you why i have an issue is i've got when you watch over an area when you listen out for good news uh when you check someone out, which is my reader person, and when you negotiate a trade. Um, and I don't have a weird move yet, but that's okay. That's okay at the moment. The reason this is important is that watching over an area and listening out for good news are both reader sitch moves. And that's exactly the point, Maria. That's, that's exactly what we're after. Um, is it possible to condense the moves by virtue of figuring out which questions you should ask? <sighs> Okay, so being reductive about it, all fiction interrogation moves are basically um, on a hit. So all, when you interrogate the fiction, on a hit, uh, learn a lot. Well, actually on a full hit, learn a lot. On a partial, you want to choose really carefully what you want to learn and on a miss you want to you, you mc moves right uh a mc move which is what ron mcgon does when he plays powered by the apocalypse so our question is this move is what the weird thing is all about. So that's, um, you know, sense what's beyond. On a 10 plus, you receive visions and truths. On a 7 to 9, you receive fragments of mysteries. On a miss, the jam makes things worse. I wrote on Twitter in a response to John Harper. Um, speaking of which, John Harper called me cool and clever, which, you know, just uh, you can you can all take that as my victory for the day. Um, <laughs> God damn, 2.30. Um, when you... I, I kicked back against um, something that I've never really enjoyed about Apocalypse World is how much um, the seven to nine result doesn't do. And the reason is that in, in my experience, so let's pick a random move here. Great, Eye on the Door. I love Eye on the Door. I think it's a great move. Eye on the Door, name your escape route, roll plus cool. On a 10 plus you're gone. On a seven to nine, you can go or stay. On a miss, you're caught vulnerable, half in, half out. This seven to nine drives so much fiction forward, um, just inherently. You can, you, there's, there's just this cost. You're either stuck in this fight or there's there's a cost. It's the same with um, uh, really any... There's a... Uh, fuck, it's the same move, so I wouldn't want to go into that. Um, oh, uh, 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 there's a good one. Chopper. chopper. I'm way too far down for the chopper. Um, and I have problems with this chopper move that I've spoken about on this before, but pack alpha. On a seven to nine, you choose one. They do what you want, otherwise they're refused. They don't fight back, otherwise they do. You don't have to make an example of one of them, otherwise you must. This seven to nine drives heaps of fiction. More than, more than a 10 plus. On a 10 plus, things go fine. On a seven to nine, things start to fall apart. Uh, on, a, on a miss, things really fall apart, right? And the issue that I have with read a person or read a situation is that if I ask you the question, in which role is the most fiction generated? In which role is the most drama generated in read a situation, read a person? And I would be inclined to say, especially in read a sitch, that it occurs at 10 plus and six minus so the miss is great because usually it's turned back on you um the 10 plus is great because you have three big pockets of information the seven to nine i don't like because it's ask one so the seven to nine reduces the amount of fiction that we're generating without actually making anything new and that's why i don't like the way this is done and so at the moment my issue is that like I've kind of done the same shit, right? Like I'm kind of stuck in the same, when you, when you check them out, this is my reader person, uh, or on a full success, you, you ask one question each from the list below. 
um, on a high roll, you ask one of the lists below and they'll ask one back. So this is my goal, um, exactly as you've put Maria, to ask at more cost. So this is my goal of being like, when you get a 10 plus, you both get to ask a question and it costs you nothing. When you get a partial hit, one of you, the cost is that they're gonna ask you back. And one of you, the cost is that you're not gonna like the answer. Um, and I think this is a format I wanna have for my, for my moves. The question is, do I want, I can, if I want, I can say that my interrogate the fiction move, when you interrogate the fiction, ask a question each, ask a question, ask one and they'll ask you one back, ask one, but you like, like the answer. That is the framework of my, um, McMove. That is the framework of my interrogate the fiction, right? So the question is, does the game benefit from, does, does any game, but specifically does Forge in this world benefit from me running specific fiction interrogation moves to, um, to like break out what questions you're allowed to ask. I have I have always loved the the Powered by the Apocalypse thing about how you have to ask certain questions because that's so interesting, right? It makes you actually think about what it is you want to know. And it and it demands that you ask questions that push the game forward. So like instead of um uh in Apocalypse World Let's have a look. Um, let's have a look at these. So uh, in Apocalypse World's Reader Sitch, um, which enemy is the biggest threat? There's no, which enemy is most vulnerable to me? Which, where, what should I be on the lookout for? These, these questions drive toward um, confrontation, toward like violent confrontation. What's my best escape route way in, way past? Is, is a great way of getting out of trouble. But it's because it's saying like way past or like escape route, it always allows you to put things through um, confrontation. And Maria, you're absolutely right that it's that it's the gumshoe thing, which is basically that um, I, I learned how to GM games based on reading Dogs in the Vineyard. And that was the first Baker game that I read. And if you've read Dogs in the Vineyard, the point that it makes in there is um, like scream the game at them, just yell it at them. Um, and like, um, Phil, you're exactly right uh, that, you know, it, it, it implies by addition. So in saying, what should I be on the lookout for? It's a flag from the character that they want to be on the lookout for something, right? And I think that, I think that Powered by the Apocalypse has always benefited from prompting players in that way. And so I think I do want to think of, of questions. Uh, I just want them to be really broad. And I kind of want my... Um, uh, I don't want my... Um, uh, reader, such and reader, person move to be kind of the same thing. Um, so here's a section in dogs that we should be talking about. So um, actively reveal the town in play. By the way, if you've never played Dogs in the Vineyard, go play Dogs in the Vineyard. Um, <clears throat> in fact, if you've never played Dogs in the Vineyard, go play Willow Bluff, available in Codex Love 2. Um, actively reveal the town in play. The town you've made has secrets. It quite likely has terrible secrets, blood and sex and murder and damnation. Here's the important bit. You, the GM, you don't have secrets at all. Instead, you have cool things that you can't wait to share. There's this interesting hump I have to get over every time I GM dogs. 
it's like this. The PCs arrive in town, they ask how things are going, and I say they're going okay mostly. And they say mostly, and I say, uh oh, they're going to figure out what's wrong in the town. And we've only been playing this for like 35 seconds. So I'd better put on my poker face. And then I'm like, wait a minute. I want them to figure out what's wrong in this town. In fact, I want to show them that what's wrong. Otherwise, they're going to wander around waiting for me to drop a clue, and then I'll have my dumb poker face on. We'll bore the whole stupid evening. So instead of having the NPC say, oh no, I meant to say things are fine. Don't worry. It's all good. The NPC throws the plot at the players. Um, you know, this person's fucking this person and everybody does this and there's blood sacrifice and I've seen wizards and witches and like, it's all horrible. And sometimes the NPCs want to lie and that's okay. You have the NPC lie. You've watched movies. You can always tell when someone's lying when someone's telling the truth. Um, and so you look at the players and you go, this person says this, the li lying to you, like the lying lie that they are. And the game goes somewhere. The game happens. And so what we want is we want when you interrogate the fiction to be, fiction interrogation moves tend to happen when players don't know what they're doing, which is probably the most reductive way to talk about it, but is so true. And is so, when players want to shoot someone in the face, they roll the shoot them in the face move. When players want to um, kiss a dude, they roll the kiss a dude move. Nobody, nobody in the world rolls read a person unless they're going to ask, how do I get you to kiss me if that's what they want? So um, what we need is when you interrogate the fiction, you always get a question. But because we're splitting into the higher role and the lower role, we can say the higher role, you get what you want and it's awesome. And you're going to get asked a question back, which is going to give you more information on them and uh, give them information on you. And, um, and and as the GM, I am I probably already know the answer to the question, but it's letting me feed it into the fiction. And then as the lower role, you're going to ask one, but you're not going to like the answer. So the higher player gets to flag to me what they're interested in achieving, and the lower player gets to flag to me what they're interested in fighting, um, which is I'm excited about. I really want that to be the framework of my... Um, of my interrogating the fiction move. I, f I like, and that's like, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, Felder. Like when forming questions, what kind of stories is the game pushing? What rewards do questions give with their answers? And that's the question is that like, so here's, here's some of the questions that I've come up with so far. Um, uh, so the way that I set this up originally, and this is, I think, and I think there's another draft of this somewhere that I can't find. But basically the idea is it was meant to be the same list, but the person who rolls higher follows it with, and what opportunity does that provide me? And the person who rolls lower answers the question, uh, ends their question with, and what does that cost us? Um, which is probably a bit cheaty, but whatever. Um, yeah, it's, there's definitely another. Um, uh, let me have a quick look to see if there's another draft of this available in the... 6.5 one. So fortune this for 6.5. Um, hold watch. Watch over or keep watch. Yeah, this is the one. Oh, it's a good, it's not a bad move. Not a bad move from little old Sydney here. Um, Maria, help me out. Sorry, mate. What? move is what our game is charming and open from because that that I, i'm i'm not is that urban shadows no it's not i don't know you're gonna have to help me out with what game that's from so that i can look it up um so this is the this is the keep watch uh oh, oh that's the bard move in dungeon world of course it is let's have a look at that so uh dungeon world um, character sheets. Oh, I, I always do this too. I always go to Dungeon World and realize that I haven't looked at the basic character sheets in forever. Charming and open. When you speak frankly with someone, you might... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool too. Um, that's awesome, right? Especially look at these. Whom do you serve? What do you... 
Oh man, imagine imagine saying to someone like, "What do you most desire?" and then them coming back and being like, "How can I get you to stop asking me about my desires or whatever?" Like that's oh. Or they lie to you, and then it's how can I get you to believe my lie? Oh, oh my god, charming and open. Um, that's that's a really really good hit. Um, but for now, I just want to talk about so. <sighs> When you keep watch, which this was designed to be a read stitch move, um, but when you keep watch, you both ask from the higher list on a, on a full success, so you both get an opportunity. Um, lower, ask one of the below questions and follow up with what does that cost us? Who do I see? What valuable thing is being moved? What happened here last night? Oh, that should be really what happened here during the day. Or oh, yes. Hey, maybe what happened here today? What patterns of behavior have changed? Who notices me watching? For a watch. Now, the thing I like about this is um, one, it's getting rid of our nested um, our nested lists problem, which is endemic to this game and is actually something I'm having a lot of trouble getting rid of. Um, two, I like that that it's very clear about what it's doing, where one person is picking an opportunity and one person is picking the complication. Um, what I don't like about it is that these are much less interesting. So, Pop-Up's World, um, I'm, I'm a hack, so we're always gonna go back to games that have done it better than I ever could. Um, so reading a charge situation is very much about like, Remember, these are all pushing towards confrontation. These are all the questions inherently are confrontational. Um, that is not, who do I see is not a confrontational question. Who notices me watching is slightly confrontational. Who doesn't want me to see them is confrontational. Um, this is, this is butts. This is a big old stinky butt. All right, so we're going to come back to this. Um, that's an older draft, and I'm going to ditch it because I don't like it enough. Um, okay, when you and a friend listen out for good news, this has the old um, fictional triggers on it, but don't worry about that. When you and a friend listen out for good news, uh, which I think is now just going to be called get news. When you get news, get some news. Um the MC what you're hoping for because I like this. I like that it's triggered by you needing to hope for some good news. Um, on a full hit, you can ask the GM a question each, which is kind of cool. Um, on a high, there's good news, ask a question and choose one. Uh, oh, so you get to you get to ask a free question, and then you get to choose one of these as well. Um, and then in the low, there's a bad news is you choose one here, um, which let's just bump this down a page so that they're all together. Um, problems with this move, core problems with this move. Uh, nested list, but we're going to ignore that. It's not particularly like, this is all fiction driving, because this is all... Hmm. So, the issue is this isn't about reading a charge situation. This, this move is kind of based on the entire world being charged. So again, remember, we're talking about civilians in a war zone. So everything is charged. So it's not like the trigger isn't when you're in a charge situation, you can roll it like with Rita Sitch. The trigger is when you do something to get news, when you talk to someone, when you ask questions, when you listen to the radio, when you um, have it shouted at you through a megaphone, whatever, um, you get this news thing um and that's basically what i mean maria like get get news is like when someone tells you something when the world informs you maybe that's the issue 
maybe the issue is that uh, reader sitch is inherently um, inward to outward, but getting news is inherently uh, outward to inward, which is um, Hmm. Yeah, so maybe the issue is that. Okay, so let's do the easiest hacky thing we can do here. Let's do this. When you when you read the layer of land, this is not it's not about a situation, right? So when you read the lay of the land, tell the MC what you... I don't think we need this because we've already got that inherent in when you do it, do it, which is core PBTA principle, right? So when you read the lay of the land, both roll plus E is fucking whatever, you can put together some pieces of info. Ask the GM a question each. On a high, there's good news. Ask a question and choose one. I don't like ask. A, I don't. I don't know about this. I don't know about about getting a free choice for question and then choosing one. Um, but again, this was me determined to not reduce the um, Phil. So, do you mean what's the worst thing happening now? Is how he approaches Rita Sitch, or is how he approaches the answers to Rita Sitch, because that could be, well, obviously that's in the low thing, right? That's that's the low role is, um, okay, let's talk about these on a really meta level. So let's talk about what this, let's talk about what this move means, like we did above with the other one. So it's when you Rita Sitch, right? No, it's not even when you Rita Sitch, it's when you, um, want to know more about what's happening in the world. That's it. So when you want to know more about what's happening, uh, about what what um, events, about events in the world. So um, the big thing about this is it's events, not people, right? So, and that's because we're asking very different questions. So remember, we come back to Apocalypse World, Read a sitch or all these confrontational ones, read a person or all these like manipulative kind of ones, and we can't at this stage mix these two together. So when you want to know more about the events of the world, you roll. All right? That's that's the thing. Then on a full hit, what do we want to happen? So on a full hit, we want to generate um, positive fiction that empowers the players to make decisions so in fact you know what i as much as as much as i, I don't actually think we even want to do this i think what we want to do is we want to empower the players to make decisions to take action um hey pat pleasure as always um it's a shame you're not going to be here to make my game better like you did last time um yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Maria. Like events and people are tied, and especially this this game. When we get to my favorite move, this game is super intimate. And is about having a super low barrier to intimacy. So um, that is an important thing. Um, so our smash empowering players to take action. Right. So that's we never want this move to happen without being followed by. And then I do something about it, right? So, so that's a thing, um, and that's oh, fucking hell. I hate I hate figuring things out that I've not understood for years. That's why this happens. That's why you take plus one because the idea is it's it's dedicating you to making a move immediately after it, which is fine. Um, we can talk about avenues for that at some point. Our high roll, we want that to empower the player to take action. And our low roll, we want that to force a complication on the player in the short term. On the players in the short term. 
and we want a miss to uh, basically be the complication, right? Well, like make move again, right? There's nothing. Um, so uh, basically, um, Maria, uh, a smash is just a full hit. Um, that's all it is. So um, what I've done is um, uh, just to give you like a quick mechanics primer is um, you've got a so full hit, partial hit, and miss. And all I've done is broken this out into um, two different results because what's happening is um, players are rolling together as a team. So it, you you do things together. And when you do, you compare your, your dice results and the player that rolls higher gets the good part of the seven to nine and the player that rolls lower gets to pick the complication of the seven to nine, um, which I dig and I'm loving and I'm in love with and I want. Um, but this is just a dumb word that I use because I am made of dumb words. Um, so so what we need to do is, so the question is, how do we empower players to take action? We empower players to take action by giving them actionable information, right? So um, empower equals give uh, immediately actionable information. And that's what um, this stuff is all immediately actionable, right? So, well, actually, who's in control here is not really, unless you're talking about shooting people. But which enemy is the biggest threat, which enemy is the most vulnerable to me is definitely actionable, especially because, uh, because Apocalypse World feeds through fiction. Um, when you ask which enemy is the biggest threat, the MC doesn't say uh, Rolf Ball is the biggest threat. Instead, he says, or she says, or they say, um, Rolf Ball is carrying a grenade launcher. Therefore, you can take a guess that he's your biggest threat. And what that does is um, generates actionable fiction, right? Because Rolfall being a threat means nothing. Rolfall having a grenade launcher means something. Um, so let's go back to here. Okay. So um, let's get rid of that because it's not helping at the moment. That's that wasn't helping. So um, we want to force a complication on the players in the short term. Who's been asking around about us is a good one. What danger is approaching right now is fine. Um, who else is interested in what we're listening out for, I think is good as well. Um, yeah, who's in control here? Not the person you think is great. Um, that's not a bad idea either, Pat. Current on Smash, they follow the info. Give them a stick on the partial, they don't follow the info. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. The problem is at the moment I don't have I don't have a resource economy, so I don't know what that would be yet. So um let's go uh plus stick if not follow. And then up here we say uh plus carrot. So at the moment, as much as possible, and especially because we're talking about comparative roles, um, it's not, no, I'm not, I'm not using keys, Maria. Um, I'm thinking, oh, we haven't done the advancement talk yet, but at the moment I'm thinking of doing compendium uh, upgrades, which are based on what I did for dogs PBTA. Um, so dogs PBTA playbooks, a rookie. Um, so uh, this is what we were looking at for if you want to take the lay the hands upon the dying move, you have to have helped another recover from their wounds before you can take that advance. Um, if you want to assert the authority of your coat, you have to have seen the impact of your stewardship spread among the faithful. 
if you want to offer to take on another's burdens, you need to off have offered mercy when it was not deserved, um, which is basically a gay red Um So basically, that's that's the idea of my advancement system. Which um, one of the things I'm trying to get away from is tracking. Um, is a large degree of tracking. I've been really dissatisfied at the moment with. God damn, he called me cool and clever one day and I'm going to rag on shit at the next. Um, I'm a bit dissatisfied at the moment with playing Blades in the Dark because there's so much resource economy that it's a little bit hard to hold in my head. So um, there's heat and there's coin and there's rep and there's harm and there's stress and, and they all feed into each other. They have this, oh God, the economy is beautifully intricate and it's amazing. And the minute I understood it, it's so Mm, I love it, but I also want about a third of it. Um, I want, I want, I want it to be a lot. Um, I want like one resource, or maybe like two or three. Right? I don't want to have uh, XP and um, stress and uh, money and health and and all that sort of stuff so at the moment i'm thinking like a health box three like stress boxes like weariness boxes basically from the watch um and then like a shared scrap economy for the for the group um and one of the things yeah there's there's going to be a lot of stuff uh but that's the idea basically is removing abstract xp um, so that if you want to do things, you have to generate them. If you, you know what? If you want to, if you want to fix stuff, if you want to repair stuff, you need to find tools. So you go out and you find tools, and then you get the repair move basically. And then if you lose the the tools, go fuck yourself. You're not you're not repairing anymore. Um. So, um. Um. Yeah, that's my plan. So uh, that's the issue with Rita Sanch. So let's keep going on this together. Um, you can put together some pieces of info. Uh, so what's this going to look like at the table? All right, well, here's, here's a question. Here's a core question. What's wrong with doing this like Sense What's Beyond? Or... Um, the Monster Hearts one whose name I can't remember, or Open Your Brain. What? What's to stop me from just doing this, basically? Um, yeah, Phil, I forgot more my game's about too, mate. It's just people having a having an event. Civilians in war. Um, when you read the land, you can put together some pieces of info, ask the GM a question each. There's good news. Ask a question and choose one. Um, what nearby is useful or valuable to me? Well, nearby doesn't need to be there. What is useful or valuable to me? What's really going on here? What should I be on the lookout for? I don't like... I don't like this being, because this doesn't generate um, empowerment to action. This generates a complication. So what should I be on the lookout for should be down here, which is basically just what Angel is approaching right now. So we can get rid of that. Um, what's really going on here is good because it implies that there's some mistruths. Um, thanks, Pat. Appreciate it, mate. Um, Come back and save my ass anytime you want to. Um, what's my best way out, way in, way through? This is a good one because physical restraint is going to be a big part of this game, right? Because in a war zone, you've got lines of fire, you've got bombed out areas, you've got, you're going to have to figure out a way of doing things. Um, 
Where is useful available? What here is useful available to me? Whoops. What's really going on here? What's all right? So, what's let's do it this way. Let's take these moves, and we're also going to take Dungeon Worlds moves, Dungeon Worlds basic moves, uh, discern realities. What we're going to do now is we're going to figure out whether these would be in a high or a low uh, group, whether they empower action or force complication. So what's character really feeling is in a high. What is your character intent? Wait, did I copy read a person? I did copy read a person. I want to read a sitch. Um... So, um, okay. so this is a high, that's a high one, that's a low one, that's a low one, my enemy's true position is a low one, who's in control here is a high one, um, what happened here recently is, what happened here recently is a high one. What is about to happen is a low one. What should I be on the lookout for is a low one again. And honestly, I'd merge those two, but that's okay. Uh, what here is useful or valuable to me is, oh, you know what? Maybe that's a way of doing it. What here is useful or available to me is um, a high one uh, who's really in control here is probably the low, uh, the high one. Sorry, I said it earlier. And what here is not as, what it appears to be is probably either, depending on, like it does both, right? Absolutely does both, um, which is a great example of the move. So this is something I was just thinking. This is something I was just thinking, right? So see this, what should I be on the lookout for? What is about to happen? These are effectively the same question. So what I was just considering then is what about, instead of um, what is about to happen and what should I be on the lookout for, um, think about the difference that's caused by how these questions are asked. So um, what should I have noticed? We past tense this, right? So maybe that's what we do. Maybe we just future tense because that's what this is. So we empower the players to action with future tense and we, we force a complication on the players in past tense, right? So maybe that's, maybe that's our secret. So in here, we say, uh, what is useful and valuable to me, to hear, to me, what's going on? What's the best way out, way through, way past? Um, as a matter of fact, let's just, let's just like grab these. Let's just grab fucking Apocalypse Swords, right? Because remember, we're, we're hacks. Um, by which I mean, I'm a hack, not I'm making a hack. So, um, no, okay, whatever. So, um, so this is all, this is all, um, uh, we're going to future tense all of these a bit better. So where's my best skate route way in way past? Uh, I really like way out, way in, way through. I don't like way past, I like way through. And the reason for that is that uh, I don't want to move about sneaking around people. I want to move where you've got to like bolt past them because that's more exciting. So which enemy is the most vulnerable to me? Uh, future tense, present tense, future tense, future tense. Maybe. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Um, let's call it present tense because that's what it is. And I'm being 
fucking blur about it. Which enemy is the most vulnerable to me? Which enemy is the biggest threat? So, um, we're going to get rid of that, and we're going to put that in the... Lo oh, shit. I don't actually want to delete this stuff. I shouldn't have deleted the, the first time. That's fine. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. I'll get to see the joys of me Google docking. All right, so we take the move, copy it, done. Take the Apocalypse World answers. We copy them into here. We change this back to present tense like we should have in the first place. We keep this as past tense. Um, Okay, so I think we're just going to get through fiction interrogation today, which is fine. Um, how is someone vulnerable to me? Phil, great question, right? Great, great question, right? So uh, what is the best way out, way in, way through? Who? Where am I getting that from? Someone wrote that. Is Was it, is the last, was it Haley and V that did that? Because whoever did, fucking genius, right? So, um, where's my best way in, way out, through, through? Which enemy is the most vulnerable to me? Yeah, you're right. Should be how is my enemy most vulnerable to me? Which enemy is the biggest threat? Should be what threats can my enemy yeah, maybe. Um, what should I be on the lookout for? I'm really... <sighs> yeah, right, okay. We'll, we'll leave that one for now. But I don't... I, I have feelings about it. What's my enemy's true position? I have feelings about it, but I kind of like, right? Who's in control here is... Um, not a move that I want in my game, I don't think. I don't think, but maybe it's maybe it's worth putting in for playtests and seeing if people interact with it. Okay, cool. So that's that's that. Now in the in the low column, we put um uh we put what way in, way out, way through has been closed to us. Um, which vulnerability, instead of uh, what about how is my enemy strong against me? No. No, no, no. That's flipping it the wrong way. I want to flip it in tense, remember? So let's just try this in exercise, even if they don't come out great. So um, uh, how has my enemy um, covered their vulnerability? Their vulnerabilities. Um, what threats has my enemy brought to bear? Um, I have a disease where every time I see um, the word like to bear, I always think of an actual bear. So like what threats has my enemy brought to bear? I'm just thinking of like a giant Trojan bear. Um, what should I be on the lookout for? Um, is definitely what should have I been on the lookout for. Uh, what's my enemy's true position is... Um, which, uh, what was my enemy's last known position? And who's in control here is who was in control here. Um, didn't I get rid of who's in control here? No, I left it. Okay, cool. So, um, 
so the good news is that just by changing tense, we've changed the intent of the moves, right? So um, that's functional. That is that is a functional move. It is not a good move, and that is an important distinction to make. Um, but what it does do is I can say, on a full success, you both ask from the high column. On a mix, you ask one from the high and one from the low. On a miss, you either both ask from the low or you're fucked, like, like move, right? Um, it's... It's functional. It's functional, and for that, at the moment, is going to be enough. We'll, we'll come back to it. Because if I get hung up on trying to fix this, this reader sitch move, um, the only thing I want to check is that it's hitting our intent. So does, does a full success empower the players to take action? Does a high empower the players to take action? Does a low force a complication in the short term? So let's have a look for this. Um, and by the way, this sort of formalism in making moves is not, I don't think, a good way of doing it, but it's all I've got. Um, where's my best way in, way out, way through? How, and by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, I'm more disappointed about this move because of how much it's taking from Apocalypse World than I am actually worried about the answers themselves at the moment. And that's that's a problem, is that I mentioned before that um, I was getting caught up in worrying about whether people thought I was clever or not, and that, that was I was letting that steer my, my move design uh, or my, my entire game design. And we can't do that. We can't worry about whether people are going to think we're clever what we need to worry about is, is this a functional system for people to build their stories on top of? So we're going to we're gonna come back. We're going to come back to our cats because that's everything needs to be based on our cats because our cats is how we're, how we're doing this, right? So um, our conceit is civilians surviving in a war-torn country. We're encouraging intimacy and working together. We're discouraging. See, this is a problem. This is a, this is a, this is why we always come back to our cards. Okay. Aim is to survive long enough to collect enough value that they can purchase transport outside the country. The tone is intimate, focus, desperate, small ambitions, external pressure, oppression from individuals, groups, the war. We're not heroic. We're not gonzo. Teamwork, living world, and oppressive economy. Okay. So remember our conceit was... Encouraging intimacy, working together, discouraging violence and destruction. The issue is that this move, uh, that one's the one I wrote before, which is pretty good at it. In fact, just look at the difference. What here is useful, available to me? What's really going on here? What's my best way in, way out, way through? Us, they're so um, constructive. They're about building. Um, Look at how like negative and violent these are. Like, look at it's not what I want. So this is this is a really bad move because I've taken it from Apocalypse World, which is essentially a fucking shit up game. Uh, where you start with a three harm shotgun and everything in your path falls over. So at the moment, this is the better move. Um, because it's talking about... So what here is useful available to me? What's really going on here? I need a who one, because this is about... Um, who here is interested? in us, or in me. Um, what's really going on here? What's my best way? My answer is through. I don't mind that. It starts to touch into the violent part of it, but it's, it's fine. What's really going on here is a little bit too vague for, for this move. Who here is interested in me? I quite like. 
what here is useful variable to me, I quite like because we're talking about value. Then in this one, who has been asking around about us is a good one because it, imp it implies a threat. What's this going to cost us? Because remember, economy is a big part of this game. What should I be on the lookout for? I don't. What I basically want this to be is like, what crucial thing did I miss? But I can't tell. I don't like the disconnect that comes from telling players when they, like, I get dramatic irony. I love dramatic irony. I don't think moves should play into dramatic irony. I think that that should be a table level behavior. Um, who else is interested in what we're interested in is, is a really, what we're interested in. Who shares our interest? Who shares our interest? That. That is a fucking good. Mm. That's important because a big part of this is that there's a, a, a small amount of resources and you need to compete for them, right? Um, or there's a finite amount of resources. So, uh, what here is useful available to me? Who here is interested in me? What's really going on here? What's my best? So. The issue is that um, I've spoken about non-choices before, and I don't like it when moves uh, have really, really broad fictional triggers, but very, very specific results such that um, you always want to pick one of them, but not the others. Um, the example I always give is uh, Ben Bar's Lift Gates, which is like nothing of value is damaged. It doesn't take a very long time. You don't make an inordinate amount of noise and you can fix it. And if you're being chased and you get to a door, like really the only one that matters to you is nothing of value is damaged. And the others are, are kind of non-choices. Um, so that is something I want to avoid. So my issue when I look at this is that fictionally, imagine if um, this should be, what would it cost me? to, yeah, uh, get something like that, right? Um, how do I need help with this? How can I, how must I take care to avoid hazard is not bad, actually. How do I, the problem with how do I need help with this is I think that's built into the system. I think that the fact that you roll together means that you always need help with everything. Um, who can help with this might not be a bad one. Um, and how must I take care to avoid a hazard is not bad either. It's basically saying, what is a hazard that I have to avoid? Um, I, I might just put like, um, who can help me? Help do I need? No, because you always need help. Who, uh... Who has the expertise I'm after, maybe? Um, so the the issue is um, we're, we're playing a game. Um, Phil, your your um, Porpo, Por Porporina. Um, so, you know, there's you and, and Rich playing Plusy, right? And you roll together. You get the high one. And you ask and, and like let's say what you want to do is um you're you've arrived in an empty building and you're looking for a person really really your your only question there is what here is useful available to me right um which is fine because you're only asking one question and you've succeeded you're you're the success so maybe that's okay um and then the low person is the one who generates the interesting stuff because they've got like what's this going to cost us what should i be on the lookout for what crucial thing did i miss what was the thing you said um what uh how must i take care to avoid a hazard 
Um, I I don't love I don't love the term hazard. It feels tonally dissonant, but I do love the idea of this. Uh, who shares our interests? Oh my god, I'm really happy with this. Um, I'm stoked with it actually. So uh, I think I think that's okay. I think that having the non-choice of the higher player being like, well, I'm just going to ask the question that gets me what I want of what here is useful available to me, who here is interested in me, who who has shown interest in me, who is showing interest in me, is, because remember, we want them to act on this, so it's got to be present tense, right? So present tense, present tense, present tense, present tense, what will it cost me is future tense. Um, the only way to do that would be what does it cost me? And I don't like that because it it puts the cart before the horse. Um, who has the expertise I'm after is just another way of asking what here is useful. What if I said who or what here is useful? Able to me. That's actually a pretty good. That's pretty good, right? Um, let's talk about carrot stick behavior. Um, I think I think the carrot is that opportunities are fleeting. So who or what here is useful available to me is a fleeting thing because other people want it. So if you say, um, what here is available to me? And I say, well, there's a big fucking rocking horse in the middle and everybody loves rocking horses. So you can, you can be the proud owner of a rocking horse, right? Then the person down here can ask like, what's it going to cost us? Who shares our interest? What should I be on the lookout for? All of these fuck with this, which is great, which is amazing because that's what we want. We want the the high that we want the low player to pick the complications for the for the group. So when the high player says, "I need food," what here is useful, valuable to me, and I say, "There's." Uh, an ESCII, it looks military issue. It's probably got some food into it. In it, the low player then asks, uh, "What's this going to? Who, who shares that interest? What's this going to cost us? What should I be on the lookout for?" All of those are like, "You, you've got to fucking move quick. Like you've got to go for." And then the benefit, the the smash, the high result, is that you ask a jam, the jam each uh, a question either from the high list or I, I might just say, ask question, GM a question from the high list each. Um, so each ask a question from the, uh, of the GM a question from the high list. Um, and the carrot is that it's, you're presented something of value without there being a complication, as long as you act towards it, right? So the only complication so the only one that really stands out in that is um, who's been asking around about us goes away because it's it's covered by who shares our interest. Um, what should I be on the lookout for? How must I take care to avoid a hazard is not bad. This how must I take care to avoid a hazard feels like language from... Um, I want to say masks or urban shadows, which are really, really precise with the way that they word things like that. How must I take it? So it's like the GM kind of gives you the solution. Um, whereas with uh, Apocalypse or Dungeon, uh, it gives you the solution is, is a very, very broad way of putting it. But like none of these are about, are about giving you a solution, really. They're about giving you a way to engage with, with the story. Um, so I think the way that I changed that is I would, I would call it, how must I take care to avoid a hazard? I might say like, what, um, will consume my attention basically. So like, 
Um, like what, what do I need to pour my attention into lest it bites me? Um, uh, what will become a problem? No, because remember, and maybe, maybe that's a problem with this is that it's a future tense thing. So remember we're trying to force complications in the past tense. So this whole, this whole thing doesn't, I mean, this does, right? What crucial thing did I miss? That should be a we. What crucial, what crucial detail did we miss? Uh, has gone unnoticed. So basically the idea behind this is that you notice it now. So the, the, the players, the, uh, have, has gone, uh, oops, has gone unnoticed. And we're just going to say, and remember functionality, not, not prettiness is the first draft, uh, until now. Um, uh, yeah. Um, like Sean fucking like spot on, right? Like what should we be on the lookout for? Like this, uh, unless you're telling me what that changed that I or we, in which case you're spot on, but it, um, <sighs> It, it really should just be like, what should have we been on the lookout for? But I want these to be past tense. What should we be on the lookout for is a future tense. That's your, that's your prompting to action, which I don't want because I don't want my high player. Uh, I don't want my high roller to be putting their questions towards uh, problem generation. That's the job of the low player. The job of the high player is um is to um to, to propel the fiction forward uh in a positive direction toward the player goals um so what i'm gonna do is cut that at the moment uh, I don't want to lose it forever because it's really, really good stuff. Oops. We're just going to put that stuff at the end of the page 10-ish there. Okay, cool. So, good news. When you read the lay of the land, roll, roll. Ooh, how have we gotten stuck or funnel? What trap have we fallen for? Fuck. That's good. I'm hesitant with stuck or funneled because I don't want ones that can invalidate each other. And stuck or funneled um, can kind of invalidate the success of the PCs there. Although maybe if like they're way, talking about way out, you can be like, you can't go any further in. Um, yeah, stuck or funneled is really good. Uh, how have we been? Oh my god, how have we been deceived? Oh, that's tight. Um, stuck or funneled is really good. I'm just so holy shit. How many pages do I want to do? I want to jump out? Um, maybe no, I've been trying to tidy it up, but maybe this stuff actually does need to sit below the move because it's too hard to to split it that far. So, um, all right, this is what I'm doing when I like a move and I'm going to put this stuff in double parentheses below it. Um, uh, I, I, Sean don't like will be deceived in the top one because I don't like, again, the high player generating problems. I like the high player generating um resources and so i want them to be talking about what's valuable i want them to be talking about contacts i want them to be talking about uh or maybe this is like this is the deceived question for the for the high player 
um, but I like it because it's broad. Um, yeah, I don't want them to be looking at like problems. I want them to be looking at solutions. Um, <clears throat> so that's why cost goes in the low roll and useful and valuable goes in the high roll. Um, okay, you know what? Lay of the land, both roll on a full success. You can put together some pieces of info. East asks from the jam from the high list. Um, I kind of want something more, but I don't know what it is yet. Um, yeah, adding the trap question to low. Um, yeah, so the the trap question is this question, right? How have we been trapped or deceived? That's, that's the same. That's that's that same fictional response, which I love, and I also love that trapped. So um, procedurally, you ask the high questions first, and then you ask the low questions, which means that if the high questions ask this, and you get to how have we been, and you ask then how have we been trapped or deceived, you can kind of invalidate that a little bit. I don't want to. I don't want to, but I could see that coming up at the table. But here, if, if someone asks, what's our best way in, way out, way through, instead of asking how have we been trapped, and then you're like, shit, now I've got to invalidate this. You can be like, oh, you've been deceived in this other way, right? And so and so the, the benefit to this is that uh, if the high player asks about uh, useful and valuable, the deception is not about whether the thing is valuable. If you're like, um, uh, um, if the, the the deception so if someone says all right the fucking rocking horse thing right we've rocked up what is useful valuable to me the queen's rocking horse sits in the middle of the room and you go god damn i want the rap, rock, rocking horse and then the next player the low player asks how have you been trapped or deceived i'm not going to say um the queen's rocking horse is actually fake because i'm invalidating the move for for some some real bullshit. Um, so I like having trapped or deceived together. I think that the teamwork that you guys put in there was awesome um, because it gives flexibility. Um, yeah, what I might need to do at some point is go through and like go through and be like, who or what here is useful or valuable to me? What's this going to cost us? Who shares our interests? What could, and like go go through them and make sure that they all go they all work together without fucking away. All right, so that's lay of the land. That's lay of the land, and we're happy about it at the moment. Um, which is this move when you want to know more about the events of the world, which is read a search. Right now, the thing is, I've had uh, a move called keep watch which is higher up so let's come away from the from the google doc a bit and just just look at my beautiful face um that's a really good move now because it doesn't require specific, the, the the thing i'm i'm so hesitant about is that really interesting fictional triggers really interest me um which is such a weird weird thing to say right but like um saying um oh man if my brain was working we could talk about it because I've, I've talked about it in other ones right um i was talking about how go aggro means something they don't tell you that it's about threats of violence but but it's it's inherent in like the guts of go aggro it means something and that i want to i want to do that and i'm so 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 upset to give up something as nice as like get news um or or it was actually about hope right so it's about like when you hope for good news or when you hope against hope for good news do this but um it, it has to for clarity like um uh, aesthetics have to fall to clarity. And if you've watched the history of Blades thing, John Harper talks about how he designs aesthetics first. Um, and it makes me kind of feel like I'm fucking in a way to not be doing that. 
it's it's difficult to one of the difficult parts about seeing other designers processes is where it differs from mine i worry i'm doing it wrong but let's talk about keep watch so keep watch as a move was intended to be a simulation of um, physically keeping watch over a safe house. It was intended to be like this real strict genre emulation thing. And when I wrote it, I was like, okay, this is a move and maybe it's only available when you get binoculars or when you build a watchtower or something like that. Like maybe it's such a, you can only keep watch when you find a position to keep watch from. And it was this really like clear fictional move. And it had this beautiful thing that I love, which is that higher and lower pick from the same list, but one asks what opportunity does that provide us? And the other asks, what does that cost us? And it was, I thought it was, I thought it was elegant and I liked what it did. The problem is at the moment, like this is conducting exactly the same behavior as, as this, like keep watch is just another one you want to know more about the events of the world. It was just a really specific version of it. So the good news is that we fixed our reader person, we fixed our reader sitch, and we've removed an extraneous move. So tonight we've already done so much on FH and interrogation, which is great. The thing that we need to talk about is do I want um do I want a oh let's talk about negotiate a trade. That's a move worth talking. Uh no. Before we move on to negotiate a trade, we're gonna talk about oops. Before we move on to negotiate a trade, we're gonna talk about um about this sense what's beyond. And I'm I'm using alas simply because I have it open, but like and and they're all the same, right? Which is that um uh, Monster Hearts 2 reference sheets and core skins. Gaze into the abyss. That's what it's called. It's a beautiful move. When you gaze into the abyss, name what you're looking for and roll with dark. On a 10 up, the abyss shows you lucid vision to take one forward. 7 to 9, confusing and alarming conditions, but you get your answer nonetheless. So this move is just a really, really broad way of interacting with fiction, right? Um, it requires two things. One, it requires some level of weirdness because, it, or it traditionally has required some level of weirdness insofar as um, because it has no hard fictional boundaries, you're meant to be able to access it at almost any time. It's basically um, what what to do if you want to do something, but don't know how to do it. It's your way of asking the GM, looking at your sheet and being like, hey dog, like, I know that I really want to, um, to steal Rolf Ball's water, but like, I don't know anything about that. Like I feel, I have nowhere to start. I don't have a starting point. And the GM looks at you and says, why don't you open your mind to the Psychic Maelstrom? And you do, and you get answers. And because nobody takes a high weird stat except for brainers, it goes fucking terrible. <laughs> That's not true. It goes, uh, nobody takes a high weird stat except brainers and the best gun lugger I've ever played with. Um, and so I love what the move wants to do. I love that the move is basically when you read a sitch, ask a question on a 10 plus the jam will will answer your question in some detail on a seven to nine they'll give you a vague idea i love it but i think it violates core tenets of pbta and it goes back to what i spoke about with act under fire a move that that says on a 10 plus you get what i want what you want on a seven to nine eh, and on a six minus you you don't is not doing what PBTA promises it will because PBTA promises it's going to do the negotiating for you and open your brain does not do the negotiating for you. 
So he's he's a really really clear uh, example of a move that does the negotiating for you. Um, battle move seized by force. Okay. Um, two seized by force, exchange harm, but first roll hard. On a ten plus, you choose three. Seven to nine, choose two. Miss, choose one. This is the game doing the negotiating for you. When you engage in battle, you get fucking shot. And then you get to pick these things. Depending on how well you roll, you will get one, two, three of them. Uh, I want to say at the top as well. In my play experience, these by force doesn't hold up. It's not It's not a well enough designed move for, for what it's trying to do. It, it offers the PCs too much success on a miss um, to do what it's trying to do. Um, uh, uh, Dungeon World. Dungeon World is a fucking great example of doing the negotiating for you, which is um, uh, like hack and slash and, and volley and stuff. So um, uh, actually, defend is a really, really good one. So when we talk fictionally, when we talk fictionally and defend, um, Pops, my boy, you are our wizard because you're no, you're our you're our druid that turns into a wolf because of course you are. Um, and I am the stalwart fighter. I jump in front of you with my shield, and you, and and I say I'm defending you. This move does the negotiating for us. It says that I can spend hold one to one to do one of these things. What I can't do, my wolf druid friend, is I cannot say, nah, I've got my you know when you know when kids play fucking cowboys? This is um something I was talking to Lou about while we're playing sick. You know when kids play cowboys and it's like, bam, bam, I shot you. And then the other person's like, no, nah, I had my everything proof shield up. And the other one's like, well I have everything proof shield defeating bullets. And the other kid's like, well I'm not coming over to your place anymore. That is where role playing games can can descend to, and PBTA stops that by setting boundaries on the move. And so, in defend, it says I can either redirect the attack from you to myself, I can halve the attack's effect or damage, I can open up the attacker to an ally, or I can deal damage to the attacker equal to my level. What that means is, if I say I throw myself in front of um, my, 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 my wolf druid friend, and I hold up my shield and I like smash the shield into the enemy and the GM goes, cool, roll. And I get a seven to nine. And it, and then I say, yeah, so what I want to do is I want to block it. And because I'm blocking it fictionally, I don't take any damage because it's on my shield. And then I, I'm using the shield and like sort of a shield bash. So I'm also going to do some damage. And the GM says to me, no, you can't because I don't care how fictionally relevant it is. The move has put a scope on your fiction. And and the, the move says, you hold one, pick one. Do you want to take the hit? Do you want to halve the hit against um, Popper? Do you want to deal damage equal to your level? Pick one. And that's why I don't like open your brain because it doesn't tell you what the stakes are before you roll. And I don't mind games that don't tell you the stakes for your role. But to, to me, to Sid, that's not the kind of PBTA I want to write. I want you to know what's, what, what the stakes of things are. I want you to know the cost before you choose to pay it. So um, I think the answer is that I'm not going to have a broad move like that. Now, I might want one later. I might have... I might have playtest feedback come back where people say, honestly, mate, I'm like, I'm looking at a lot of things here and and I just feel like I can't interact with the system. Like we're sitting at home in the safe house and I feel like I can't like interact with the system. And maybe, maybe there's a safe house move for it. When you build a radio, uh, when, when you tune in, well, like if you have a radio, you may take this move. When you tune in, Roll plus is this, 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 right? Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's a move that's there, um, but it's not basic. Is the key? 
because it doesn't have enough boundaries for me. So we're going to talk about negotiate a trade because um, negotiate a trade is going to be an important thing in this in this game. Um, and we're going to talk about why negotiate a trade is fitting under fiction interrogation. So economy management in this game, there are going to be three. There are going to be three resources. You're going to have health. Uh, but it's not going to be harm. We'll, we'll talk. You're going to have health, you're going to have energy levels, and you're going to have uh, four resources, scrap, and you're going to have valuable items. So back to front, your va valuable items are the things that allow you to make different moves. When you have a comfortable bed, you can roll the move when you try to sleep alone. Or when you, when you have a uh, radio, you can roll the move when you tune in. Um, scrap is currency and is also food and is also medicine and is everything. And at the begin, it's, it's think, think barter from Apocalypse Sword, right? But like, so at the beginning of the session, you all have to take a certain amount of scrap. And then if you want to build something, you'll have to use scrap. And if someone gets wounded and you want to injure them, it'll cost you scrap. And like... It's going to be very, very similar to the lifestyle move of Apocalypse World, but much more constant. And so the primary drive for the PCs is about getting scrapped. And the reason for that is um, stash, which I guess is like a fifth thing. It's basically it's basically scrap again, which is um, uh, we can only fit 10... We only have like slots, quote unquote, for 10 scrap in our... Oh, Popper, I will tell you about my intimacy stuff, mate. There's no one I'd rather tell more. Um, I will go into that move after negotiate a trade, I think, because that's my favorite part of, of this game at the moment. Um, so, um, uh, you will scrap when you when you have too much scrap, or well, when you when you don't, when you've got no scrap, or you've just got a little bit. Someone can make the decision to do this move called squirrel away, and what they do is they take that from other from from the group from the collective they take that scrap and they turn it into their own little nest egg their own little stash and then when you want your character to leave the war you take your nest egg and you spend that to the to the people smugglers to get shipped out and so there's like this thing about we all want scrap there's no point collecting it if no like we're not going to you can't you can't outlast war. You need to get out. So it's like you've got to take stuff for yourself from the group, which is uh, so antithetical to the rest of the design. So it's like it's all about working together and it's all about intimacy and it's all about holding hands and being a team. And then all of a sudden it's like, but but I'm taking this for me and only for me. And like these ones are for anyone else that thinks that they can tell me not to right so that's that's a that scrap economy um tiredness and, and injury um you're basically going to have like one one box that just says injured and you will tick it and then if you get injured again you're dying and honestly if you get shot like there's going to be there's a move for that where you basically just it fucking sucks and it's because this isn't a move about this isn't a game about superheroes with harm clocks and shit. This is a game about civilians in war. And if you get fucking shot, you get shot. Like, that's just it. Um, and that sucks. Uh, so we're going to talk about negotiating a trade because, because negotiate a trade is this important part of an economy where you either generate scrap by doing jobs for people you turn scrap into specific items or you turn specific items into scrap. And so the way negotiator trade looks like looks at the moment is like this. Uh, the issue is at the moment, it's only working for goods. It's not good. It's not a good get, get a job move. Um, it's not good at uh, that sort of stuff. So when you negotiate a trade, you roll on a full success. They're willing to let it go for a little less than usual. And uh, the GM will tell you, the GM will be, be honest with you there. On a, on a high, oh, for the high roll, you get it. You get the, the thing that you wanted. Whether that is 
scrap or a, a service or it's actually good for services in uh no it's not good for services because of the low rolls that's fine um whether it's like a service um getting scrap from someone getting something specific from someone you get it um you choose you either don't have to give them something specific and valuable you don't have to give up any scrap or they throw information in for free so ask one from the higher uh what did i call it in the end fucking lay of the land i think i called it um boy boy do i need better names um low uh the low roll is well it ain't perfect choose one uh it's fucked right now but you can fix it it's duct tape and twine so you might get a use or two out of it before it breaks uh it definitely belongs to someone else um it definitely belongs to someone else, which is like, so the issue with this one is problem now, problem soon, big problem later. Um, low, what of ours do we notice is lost or damaged? Yeah, that's that's like, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's actually not a bad way of doing it, hey? Um, um, something is damaged. Uh, in the process, sounds dumb. Something is damaged, maybe. So if it's a surf, yeah, something is damaged. Um, something is damaged, but you can fix it cheap, maybe. Um, and then you can do the same thing with this. Basically, taking turning its into something. That's that's not a bad idea. Uh, and that would make it a little bit more palatable to services. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with ne uh, the the issue with negotiator trade at the moment is not. The issue with negotiator trade is not the moves wording. I can fix that. The issue with negotiator trade is, do I want that move? Do I want, and the reason for that is that, uh, so Alas for the Awful Sea, just because I played it earlier today, um, doesn't have a, when you sell something to someone move, right? But you can do it. You can do it through read and others thoughts. Um, you can interact with them. You call it a charge interaction. You say, how can I get this character to give me more money? Um, what does this character need most? There you go. Like you've, that's it. Two questions. You've, you've got a fucking trading move. Uh, Apocalypse World, same thing, right? There's no get a job, get jingle thing, right? There's no, if you need thing, tell the MC you'd like to work a gig, right? But if you went up to, um, up to balls and was like, how can I get your character to hire me? Um, you know, that's, there's, there's options. There's options. And the question is, if we come back to my reader person move, which is check them out. What do they want from me? What's their most immediate need? Yeah. Like maybe I don't, um, do you mean it's not, sorry, um, mate, do you mean it's not, it doesn't read as desperate in the context? Like, it doesn't sound like it's coming from a position of desperation. Like, it doesn't sound like it's for desperate people. Or do you mean that negotiated trade isn't desperately needed in the game? as you understand it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, like it's not, right? Like negotiated trade is coming from position of strength, which is fine because moves are allowed to be transactional and are allowed to come from positions of strength. Like I don't have an issue with, I don't have an issue with this move being transactional. In fact, it's negotiated trade, right? Like showing you, like you're spot on. It and um and Phil, you're also like totally right as well that it's not that that it's that it's not coming from a position of weakness. That it's not it's not a position of desperation. Um, I'm not sure. So check them out when you check them out. Roll. Uh. Ask question to each of the list below, 
in that last one back. Um, high roll last one. So what do they want? What do they want from me? What's their most immediate need? What are they worried might happen? What do they intend to do? What valuable thing will it cost me? Yeah. So this is. Uh, how can I get them to give me? See, one of the things that I want to talk about about this move is that these three things at the bottom are all asking the same thing. But the reason I like them broken out is because it allows players to tell the GM what resource they want to give up. So the lower role person can look at this and say, or the, the, well, either of them can look at this and say, I really don't, uh, you know, we've got, we've got a ton of scrap, but we don't have a lot of valuable shit. So I'm going to ask this one about scrap so that we're coming from a position of, 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 of strength. And that's fine because if the higher role person asks it, that's a fairly cheap price, right? That's, that's, that's the, the, um, that's the, the compromise that the move promises. And the lower role person, if they ask it, it's going to be a really, really high answer. Um, so I kind of, like these two could merge into here or could merge into like, what would it cost us, right? Um, how much would it cost us for? Um, at the moment, no. Um, Phil, at the moment, I don't have a go aggro, intimidate, threaten, seduce thing. At the moment, I only have transactional behavior because um, threatening and withholding is something I'm actually struggling a little bit on how I want to fit it in the game. Um, we'll talk about it. Like, fiction interrogation for me was the most important thing to get to get done. But so apart from these having like some big stuff, I'm I'm not unhappy with this move. I like what it is. I like what it does. I just need to like what it says. It's fine because it's just a decision about whether I have two or three of those. Maybe separate moves implies less powerful position gets in more specifics. Um, you're right. I. So you're right, Sean. That it's a, a separate move. If I want a separate move. It needs to be more specific. But I think the only reason I would do that is if it was based around a certain valuable item. So maybe maybe there's an item like, uh, maybe we can talk about like uh, old world currency or diamonds or, or like art or something like that. And it's like when you have art, you can do this trade move right but but for now you've just got to use check them out which is which is just the best move you've got for it and it's not particularly good but it'll work um because i think check them out comes as as you're highlighting um and phil you're entirely right like in a desperate situation you're reading the lay of the land, like in a, in a desperate situation, you're, here we go, in a desperate situation, you're talking about um, what's useful available to me, right? Uh, is, uh, is, is Basecamp a reference to a, um, uh, like a game or something, or is Basecamp a reference to like a place? Because I've been using safe house, but Basecamp is also uh, a good term. A really good term. Um, and then we're going to talk about intimacy. Okay. Um, the key to this game is low barrier to intimacy. Um, really, really low barrier to intimacy. Um, there is a moment that comes at the start of every Monster Hearts game where we say, we're talking about 15-year-olds what is a sex move really and um oh new tomb raider games that is something to uh 
add to my inspiration list. Uh, I won't have a chance to play them for a month and a half, but um, uh, Sean, you're not wrong. Uh, move that implies help at the base, something like when you need help or require aid. You, my friend, are going to love when you tend to the wounded um, or something like that. Um, that's That's got a similar thing to it um, and could be expanded out to like when you require aid. Um, yeah, to render 2013, um, which honestly, like, let's be real, I should have been playing anyway, because it looks dope. Um, so when you, so, uh, what I've done to reduce the barrier to intimacy is I've re removed the idea of sex moves. And, and I think that, I think that each playbook will still have an intimacy move, but it will be about changing intimacy for them. But I think there's a baseline for intimacy as well. So um, the baseline of intimacy or, or, the, the, or how every character interacts with intimacy is that it happens very quickly. It happens, it happens really easily and it happens uh, from the slightest things. And so that's why the trigger for it, which I'm really happy with uh, at the moment, is when you share what little you have. Um, and uh, the rest of the move, I'm not happy with at all at the moment. Um, there's some issues with it about like whether I integrate it into the read move about whatever. Um, make camp is a good uh, reference to in Dungeon World as well. Yeah, um, make, make camp's tending to a very different type of fiction. And I, uh, boy, let's talk about things I don't like about make camp. Um, I don't like. We're going to talk about this when we talk more about phasic games, which I don't have time to get into tonight. But um, Dungeon World is a phasic game that pretends not to be, where you have the camp phase, which is a role, or the adventure phase, which is like the navigate provisions um, trailblazer move, right? And so um, I... I don't, I don't want to, um, to have take camp or make camp be as abstracted as it is in Dungeon World, which is like you roll a take watch move and then you wake up and we go back to the adventuring, which is really what Dungeon World wants to do, but not what I want to do. Um, and when we get to phasic games, we're also going to talk about the campfire hack. Um, so. Um, all right, let's talk about share what little you have. So when you share what little you have, roll plus heart, everything's better. Let's don't, don't worry about this and don't worry about this and don't worry about this at the moment. Worry about this because this is, I think, some of the, the best parts of this design, which is share what little you have. That is such a low barrier, right? Like um, you've only got like uh, time a look, body warmth. Um, your your safe house, your base camp only has like two beds. Oh, well, we'll, we'll share. That's super intimate, right? So share what little you have. Or what about like, um, you know, the, oh God, I don't know, like anything, anything. Um, two people spending time together, someone who, who, um, who has food, offering some to someone who doesn't like, it just smashes it. And so I want it to be analogous to the sex move, but I don't want it to be a sex move. I want I want people to feel feel comfortable. Um if I'm the grizzled old journalist and I take a sip from my water and then offer it to this the the 13 year old um, a boy that we've picked up who's lost his parents. I want people to feel comfortable saying that that is share what little you have and that is a moment of intimacy that is not romantic or sexual. And so that's that's my big thing of this. I want I want this really, really low barrier so that when you engage with other players and other NPCs and stuff, you're basically forced to... to hit these intimacy moves you're like 
mm, you just can't you just can't not um and the thing that really annoys me is i thought i actually had a good version of this that i liked and i don't um yeah no it's kind of fucked that the only version i have of it is where i've just like smashed out pseudo code about it right so let's talk about interesting news right let's talk about interesting because we we have before so let's talk about them now um okay so the two versions of share what little you have at the moment one is uh it triggers another another um what did i call it i am up i am off or something like that or like check them out um one version of it is like you each ask a question and this, this is how all this has got 10 plus and seven lines on it um but you give things to other people this is this is all based on the watch so and yeah no phil spot on like uh people cling together for warmth is absolutely like a moment that i see in this um and it'll be a thing where like uh unless you have heat in your in your thing uh one of the moves that you'll have is like it will it will cost you an extra it will cost you extra scrap each night or each day or whatever to stay warm basically um so like that heat like sharing heat thing is definitely something i want to trigger uh, and i'm so glad that you're like seeing that marker in the work so um uh, and that's also really good because it's physically intimate as well. It's like you physically press it. Anyway, um, so let's talk about intimacy moves in the same way that we talked about others. So intimacy moves traditionally, especially in Apocalypse World, are about this kind of, um, well, look, you're not wrong feeling that like there, there, there can be a step to it. Um, and that's what, um, shit, where is it? I don't have it. Oh no, here, this one. Does this mean more than we're pretending it does? That like, I love that someone can ask that. That's such a, such a, and I love that um, the person who's high, like, I, I, I don't like this. I think this is bad design, but it makes me happy that the person who rolls high asks these like really productive relationship building questions about like where do you see yourself after the war and that the person who rolls low is asking like will you regret this later who would you rather i was like that's fucking savage right um okay maria um the only thing i don't like about it is that um because of the low barrier that this has um these can get repetitive very quickly and i'm hesitant to play a f like i i kind of want to see this hit once uh maybe maybe like so every time it's hit it's two characters because they're rolling together so i kind of want to see this hit like maybe twice a session um yeah, absolutely, Phil. Like, ab absolutely, that's that's exactly one of the ideas. Like, um, snowball. Uh, I, I haven't written any snowballs yet because, except for like this thing, because uh, I don't want to snowball into things that I haven't written yet. But yes, absolutely. There's the idea that like um, you are forced to share what little you have with them, or like uh, um, if you roll low on the check amount list against an NPC, it's like they see you looking at them and they think it's more than more than it is. Roll share what little you have, you've given them something. Uh, so um, I think share what little you have is gonna be involved in the exhaustion economy. So um, the exhaustion economy is gonna look like, and the, and the reason is I'm taking this from, um, the watch which what is wrong with me that i don't have the watch oh no i do it's just in a zip file um so 
The Watch, Anna Crater, Andrew Medeiros. Um, open up someone. This is the move here. Um, so this is the move that's kind of based off. Um, weariness is like what I'm talking about with exhaustion uh, insofar as... Um, let's find a character sheet playbook thing. Uh, where's weariness? It's over here. So it's like four wearies and then you do a move when you, when you tick it off. Um, that's kind of going to be like mine, except I'm thinking that when you, um, this is, this is really, really early stuff, but when you're too weary, you act as normal, you choose one, you either spend two scrap for the energy you need, or you treat your role as one lower. Um, which, like, uh, is is I don't want to stop people from doing things when they're weary, um, but I do want it to cause more detrimental fiction, I guess, which means that, like, um, treat your role as one would be like, um, you cannot um, get a full or a high tie. You cannot get a smash, we'll call it, so we're just going to find a place smash later. Um, <laughs> dog. <laughs> you <laughs> your comrades. Um, you cannot get a smash. Um, if you roll a mix, you always choose the low lower result. You always choose the low result, uh, even if your team is as well. Um. Yeah, so basically that's that's what the weary one looks like at the moment. So the idea is sharing what little you have is going to be about this like keyword of rest, right? So rest is going to be like um, reduce your exhaustion, basically. Um, capital E, exhaustion, protected word exhaustion, um, or weariness or whatever I call it. Um, now, I've been thinking about this thing called solid or tight. Um, like you and they are, so you and someone involved, or um, Mark, someone involved, because that's, man, hey, that's the other thing we need to talk about, which is, um, I don't have a I don't have an aid move. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have an aid move. Every move is people working together. And so what's gonna happen is if you've got two people working together and a third wants to help, the third person rolls it effectively functions as advantage and they um you know, they they um take the best two dice. Which means that there could be a position where three people are sharing what little they have where there's like this little 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 fucky dog pile of people um all sleeping together on a floor and so if i've got four pcs all four of them roll they take the best two dice right so the idea is i need to make sure my language is facilitating that where um i don't say mark the other person because then it it seems like it's only going to be the people whose dice are chosen, and that's not what what I want to happen. I want everyone to be involved fictionally. We just pick the results that we pick, right? So um, in this share what little you have, um, when I have um, tight or solid or whatever I'm going to call it, like bond, right? It's, it's, it's bond. Let's call it bond because, again... It's just easy, right? So mark uh, a bond with someone involved. Now, if there's only two of you, that's really, really easy, easy choice. Um, if there's three of you, you can pick one. Um, then you um, come down here to what bonds or tight or solid means. Do I even have that on this bit? No, I don't. That's fine. Maybe it's on this one. Uh, what did I call it? Solid? Yeah. 
when you act with someone with whom you're solid, you roll on a mix, you both get the high result. You can only be solid with one character at a time. Um, and so it's like, uh, on a mix, you both get the high result, then erase your solid. You can only be solid with one character at a time. So with, with whom you've bonded, let's use bonded, then erase your bond. Oops. You can only be bonded to one character at a time. Um, and so um, you mark a bond with that person. So sharing what little you have is this like little setup move. Um, uh, yeah, marking those involved or someone involved explain why you grow tighter. Like, uh, sure, that's exactly what this is. Like, what this is this is meant to be, right? Like, it's meant to be you grow tighter with someone, and then you uh, so give the player marking the bond the fictional agency to explain the mechanical bonus. That's a really good point. That's kind of inherent. Like, that is that is a um, PBTA structure kind of works like. There's this this little circle in the middle, which is the negotiation of the moves, and then this there's this bigger circle, which is the negotiation of the table conversation, or the um, the negotiation of the setting in the world and the fiction. And then there's one bigger than that, which is the table conversation. And at the moment, we're playing in this little move circle, but that point about giving the player the player that's doing it the fictional agency to expand to explain the mechanical bonus that exists in like layer two or layer three. And it's the same as Phil was saying earlier with something. Um, oh man. Can't remember what we we're talking about um, earlier, but um, that's that's what we're talking about there as well. We're, we're like, not everything needs to exist within the sphere of the moves because some stuff. So the idea of when you do it, you do it does not exist inside the moves. That's that's table conversation stuff. The idea that fictional inputs have mechanical outputs is is the conceit of Apocalypse World, not um, an, an intermittent thing. Um, declaring suspicions. I don't think I want suspicions to be a big part of this, but I do need to read B down. Um, okay, show what Lily I have. Um, so you're going to reduce your exhaustion. So like everyone involved reduces exhaustion weariness and everyone involved marks a bond with someone involved. That's that's the smash thing, right? Choose one to ask the other character. Mark a bond with them. To ask another character. Choose one to ask another character. Now, what I really want to say here is like tell them to erase a bond, right? But we see the problem. We, we can see the problem, which is that this invalidates this. And we can't have that. So what we might do is the low person What if we make this a choice? at your discretion, tell them to erase a bond. Uh, like after they've answered. So what I'm basically getting at here is this manipulative thing where it's like, um, mm, oh, answered. Uh, man, I need to get better at two things at once if I'm gonna stream this shit. Um, so the idea behind this is, um, uh, Phil, you and I, we are actually, Phil, I used you last time, Sean, Sean, you and I, we are hanging out in, in our little safe house base campy thing. And, um, I look over at you. And you just seem like distraught, right? And so I just, I just like sidle up next to you and just like put my arm around you. Um, 
Oh, man, you guys can't see what I'm typing. Sorry, I'll, I'll bring that across when I'm done with this. Um, I put my arm around you and, and we just we just share that moment. Now, that moment is is what little we have. So I share that with you. We share that with each other. So we roll. You roll high, Sean, and you say, well, it's just me and you, Sid. So I um, said, said the Baz Lerman of RPG, uh, I'm going to mark a bond with you. And then I'm going to ask you, where do you see yourself after the war? And we have a conversation. And then I get to ask you a question. Now, my questions are pushing you into a position where they're, they're, they're begging you to say mean things about me, right? Like, does this mean more than we're pretending it does is such a manipulative question. Who would you rather I was is such a manipulative question. And then after you've answered, if I don't like what you've said, I can tell you to erase a bond. That's fucking disgusting. Like one, it's disgusting because it's it's bad design in that I'm letting half of a move invalidate the other half of the move. But it's okay because, and I said this in episode two, maybe, about complicity. It's okay because the GM and the system is not making the decision. The players are. It's their fault. If if I tell you to erase your bond with me, because I don't like the question, the answer to the question you gave me. That's that's on me as a player slash me as a character, and it's on you as a player slash you as a character for not giving me the answer I wanted, right? And that's some manipulative shit. But that's what intimacy is about. Like intimacy is manipulative, right? So, um. This is what I typed before, which is like this bit. I, I just created this after they've answered at your discretion. Tell them to erase a bond. I don't like, will, will you regret this later? I would prefer it to be more manipulative. So it's like, um, what regrets do you have about me? Um, oh, fuck. Let's just, this is just a list of questions that girls have asked me. Uh, after after our sharing of what little we have, um, what do you like most about me? Where do you see yourself after the war? What can I do to make you happy? Okay, this is a really good... Maybe we go back to our... Let's go back to our check them out. So when you check them out, what do they want from me? What's the most immediate need? What are they worried might happen? What do they intend to do? What they okay? So let's use some of these because remember these drive fiction. That's why we wrote them. So let's come back down to here. And instead of being, what do you like most about me? We should be like, um, I really like what I really like. What can I do to make you happy? Where do you see yourself after the war? Is fun. This is this is a present to throw a player. This is a flag and a half, right? Um. What are you worried might happen? Um, I'm not sure if I like this because this is tonally different. So this is a this is a beautiful question to ask. This is a beautiful question to ask. This is like a sad question. So sad question should like exist down here in this low bit. So um, instead of what are you worried might happen? We're going to say like, is there any focus sign or other character development? Because even if the move has no forward mechanical progress for his character development, Sean, Sean, my boy, my friend, I, I said my boy and I'm sorry, I have no idea on uh, your uh, identity. Um, Sean, my friend, you are the rightest of people. Um, I have been jumping up and down lately about the sprawl, which I love. And Hamish, if you ever listen to these, I fucking love the sprawl. I have so much fun playing it. It's one of my favorite PBTA games. But I hate that you had to put a number next to everything. And um, uh, 
and, and like I, I, and I love the idea of moves that propel fiction forward without adding numbers. And this is a move that does that. Even if that bond thing wasn't there, it propels fiction forward. And that's that's what we need to do with these with these words, right? So we need to say like, what can I do to make you happy? Is a fiction propelling move question where do you see yourself after the war is less so but i think is something is a question i want to ask um what about like uh um what have you uh i don't know if i want what have you lost but like um i want to say like what do you want to recover from before the war but that's pretty much like what can i do to make you happy right um what Um, what about like what about me makes me special? Um, about me makes me special to you. Um, I just fucking love the manipulative questions at the end. Like I just, I just love so much about this move. Um, I just we're gonna we're gonna change this top thing from everything is better shared to just you share a tender moment. Um, reduce your exhaustion. You share a tender, fulfilling moment. Reduce your exhaustion, weariness. Oh, that's what we want to do as well. Um, okay. Um, that was that was another option we have. Uh, I like taking the bond but to better represent the manipulative nature of low questions. You're taking something on someone opening up to you. Yeah, you're not you're not wrong there. Actually, the fact that manipulation is actually quite a thing. The other thing I wanted to do is turn this into a gift. So it's like choose one question to ask another character, then mark a bond with them. Um, like to give them this gift of reducing exhaustion and so it's like um and tell them to reduce their exhaustion exhaustion uh and mark a bond with you so it's a gift that you're giving the other player after they've answered at your discretion tell them to either uh, erase their weariness or mark a bond. Maybe, maybe mark a bond, mark a bond. Oh, again, it's 4.30 in the morning. Too late for this. Wow, shit. Does that really mean that we have been going for like two and a bit? Two and a bit hours? Yeah, shit, man. We got to wrap this up. Nobody wants to listen to me for two and a bit hours. Um, so, um, these ones need to come up in the order to here. So, um, let's get rid of that. Can you show what little you have roll plus whatever? On a smash, you share a tender and fulfilling moment. On, on a smash, you share a tender and fulfilling moment. So you share exhausting weariness, mark a bond with someone involved. So in this one, everyone gets the rest and everyone gets a bond, which is great. That's an awesome success and I want that. I want this to be so attractive. Hyper, the high roller. Choose one question to ask another character. Then tell them to reduce their exhaustion and you mark a bond with them. I think makes more sense. And you mark a bond with them. I think, I think the high roller is showing that they're connecting. I think these are connection questions and so they should have the bond. You tell them to reduce their... Uh, okay. 
Okay. Then reduce your exhaustion and mark a bond with them. I'm going to say bond with them. Choose one to ask another character. Once you've got your answer at your discretion, either erase your weariness uh, or mark a bond. So the idea is that because the there's this like emotional manipulation part of it. If you're bonding to them, it's not restful. Um, but if you are not bonding to them, if this doesn't mean anything, there, 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 this is it. This is it. Uh, after they've answered, decide if this means anything to you. If it doesn't, it does. Mark a bond. If not, uh, erase your weariness. So the yeah, yeah, that's the move I want. That's the move. If it means something to you, it's emotionally exhausting, right? And if it doesn't mean something to you, then you get to get rid of your weariness because it's just casual, right? It's just casual intimacy and casual intimacy is refreshing and, and brings back your energy and you get rid of that sort of, sort of stuff, but you're not bonding to them. But the person, yeah, Sean, absolutely right. Like that adds teeth. That's, and that's what, it's such a, oh man, war intimacy is complicated intimacy, right? Like you, there is no such thing as a free boning in the middle of war. And uh, I think that's what I want the whole thing. I think I want it to be like the low person asks this emotionally manipulative question and after they've answered, just you decide if it means anything to you. Oh, I really like that. You share a tender, fulfilling... Uh, uh, that needs to be worded better with the success thing. So the success thing, this... And, and honestly, um, I've spoken before about how like the fiction should drive the mechanics and stuff. And honestly, like this is very form, uh, it's not formalistic. Um, it's very semiotic, but it's not, we're not really caring about the way the the words sound and the fiction sound at the moment. We're just making sure it feels right in, in the, in the, in the heart place. Uh, <laughs> Sean, it's shitty in a human way. It's just my favorite way to describe PBTA games. Cause it's so fucking true. I like, PBTA games are about it's shitty in a human way. Um, you know what we should do to cheat on this is that there's there's a Monster Hearts move that's really similar to this, um, which is the ghoul sex move? No. The hollow sex move? Uh, not really. Okay, the the hollow sex move is when you have sex with someone, both players secretly write down whether it was confusing or soothing. If you reveal the same answer, you both get experience. That's that's similar to what I'm trying to hit here, which is like, um, <laughs> trying to figure out with that like weird emotional connection. Oh my god, it makes me so happy. Um, I'm so excited that such like that move is exactly what I want it to be. That looks in my head and on the page exactly how I want it to play. Uh, I'm, I'm like, that's a Lauren move, right? She'd love that shit. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, 4.30 in the morning. I've been doing this for two-ish hours, probably 2.15. Um, nobody needs anything more uh, of me. Um Next time I do this, which I'm hoping to do this tomorrow night, if my assessment is done, um, to go through um, conducting rituals of the old world, which is going to be about like everything from playing Monopoly to um, conducting funerals and weddings. 
Um, we're going to talk about tending to wounds. We're going to talk about copying shrapnel, like the, the actual... Um, uh, so again, um, rituals of the old world, tending to wounds, copying shrapnel, um, braving the sniper lines in daylight. Like we're going to talk about something about like a restrictive move about like when you, when you go somewhere you shouldn't be basically, we're going to maybe, we're not going to talk about weariness economy and stuff yet. Um, we're not really going to talk about squirreling away and escape the wars. We're not really going to talk about interfere yet either. So I think the next one's going to be about rituals of the old world, tending to someone's wounds, copying shrapnel. And it's also, I also need to talk about um, when you like deliver violence, right? Like uh, when you deliver violence and um, when you like um, make demands with threats. Um, not because I particularly want this to be a game about violence, but um, Adam Adam Gillis uh, had a really good comment. They said, um, uh, and it's at Communion Crow, by the way, um, does the girl by moonlight uh, blades hack the, the uh, a magical girl anime blades hack? Um, I'm just trying to remember that comment. Um, it was something like, if you don't give people a way to to enact violence, they will get frustrated that, that the system doesn't provide that. And I think what I want to do is like have a move that's about violence, but have it be like um, exactly like what Sean was saying about um, about intimacy being in a shitty human shitty in a human way the violence will be shitty in a human way. So it'll be something like um, when you deliver violence upon someone um, on a, on a smash, like it is, it, it, it can't even be controlled. It'll be like pick one. They're in desperate agony or they're going to die. Um, and then the high and the low results are going to be like chewing through resources, other people getting hurt drawing unwanted attention like really um the move is going to the there are two ways to tell people not to do things empowered by the apocalypse you can either not make a move about it or you can make a move about it that fucking sucks um and that is, I think I'm going to go the make a move about it that sucks way so that people look at the move and go, shit, I will really get what I want if I go violent on this, but I don't like want to because of these massive risks. Yeah, like shaking to core, like you immediately, you immediately feel your weariness. Like you, you, or maybe, maybe you, um, maybe you like, if you have three weariness boxes, you just fill one in. That's it. You're just done. You you are scarred as as an individual. You just you to like be entirely pointed about it. Like you 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 lose spoons. You you run out of the ability to have as much energy as other people um, because you are overstressed and and that sort of stuff. And that's an option. So um, that's the kind of thing that we're going to look at. We're going to talk about. Um, We'll probably spend about two hours on that as well. Um, rituals of the old worlds, tending to wounds, copying shrapnel, which is an easy one because I know it because copying shrapnel is exactly the same move I did in Dogs in the Vineyard PPTA, and I love it, and I'm, and I, and I'm not going to change it at this point, so I really like it. Um, huge cost, fill in very box um, because that's a great idea that I don't want to lose. Thanks, Sean. Um, all right, let's, let's do an outro on this. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Popa. Thank you, uh, Maria and Pat for saying hi. It does really make the difference to me too. I, I love talking to myself. It makes things very easy to, to do things talking to myself, but it is amazing how much benefit I'm getting from having 
people with with whom to interact. Um, I am making better moves and I'm understanding my own moves better. So I'm really grateful, very, very, very grateful for uh, for the time that you guys spend watching me do this dumb shit. Um, uh, I'm going to be away for the next month, uh, going overseas, doing some university stuff, which is why I'm trying to smash through this assessment now. Um, this there there are not going to be shows while I'm gone. My plan is to do one tomorrow night, do one the night after, do one the night after. So that's three over the next three days to release maybe one a week while I'm gone um, <clears throat> for people to, to watch or maybe just like release them all now and people can just like mull it over for a month. I don't fucking know. Um, and... Uh, when I get back in June, my plan is to do my first interview series on this, where I will be chatting to PBTA designers, or really, really not just PBTA designers. I'll be chatting to designers. I'll be chatting to um, uh, probably some writers, um, really creatives. We chat to people who make things for a living um, <clears throat> or for a hobby, and we will uh, discuss what the fuck this is all about and um, what their struggles were and the problems that they came across and how they got through them and, and, and that sort of stuff. Um, that's June in which um, Drawing the Owl uh, interview series, which is probably going to be called like Giving a Hoot, um, will be occurring. Uh, and then Drawing the Owl itself will still be continuing. Um, that's into my exam period. Once I get out of exam period in late June into early July, the plan is to have this game into a playtestable phase to at least run core mechanic, which is to make sure that this rolling together thing works, to make sure that me choosing something, you choosing something works, to highlight some real, real core problems. And um, uh, I will make that playtest, assuming my players are okay with it. I'll make that playtest a public thing as well. That will also be on this channel. So you can see um, what that methodology looks like and how, and how much the game doesn't work and how much it does work. Um, we're going to have some really realistic expectations there. Um, and that takes us through to, to July. Um, I don't have anything for you uh, after that at the moment, but I'm assuming it's going to be moving into some more structural stuff like GM moves, uh, playbooks, um, the, the compendium advances, stuff like that. So that's, that's the next two months of the state of the owl. Um, again, Thank you for your company. Uh, again, this is meant to be as much an inspiration to your own design as it is, uh, and your own works as it is um, me fucking around with my toys. Uh, you, you have seen that, like how much <clears throat> I have to go through things, and how much I've struggled, and how much like my first drafts get overwritten and overwritten, and how unhappy I still am with some of the stuff that's on there. But like, I just have to accept it and move on. I want that to motivate you to to just keep plowing through your stuff like just keep grinding at it um and just doing your best um yeah so uh i i have been the cool and clever sydney icarus the baz lerman of the rpg community uh this has been drawing the owl it has been a wonderful time I'll see you in the short term. Good night.